St. Patrick's Day doesn't have to be about corned beef or a leg of lamb. Hey, check out my bangers and mash. Stay tuned. Hey, St. Patty's Day is just a few days away. What does that mean? It means this episode is all about Irish food. This year, I'm doing bangers and mash. Why? Because I'm not going to be doing corned beef, not traditional enough. I'm not going to be doing leg of lamb. Don't have enough time right after work to be making a leg of lamb. So I'm going to be doing bangers. Bangers and mash. Now understand, many of you don't have a traditional Irish food store nearby. Now I happen to have one, but I'm not going that route because I was in the store today looking for some sausages or bangers or whatever, just in case they may be carrying them. And I came across these. Now I saw these before. They're made by Johnsonville. I'm not pushing Johnsonville, but I said Irish oh garlic sausages. So I figured a lot of you can probably get your hands on that. So that's what I'm going to use for my bangers. What are we going to do? Well, I'm going to cook my bangers on my Ninja Foodi over here on my griddle method. While that's going, I'm going to get into my sauce, which is really kind of one of the main components to this whole thing. Bangers and mash is the gravy, the onion gravy. So I'm going to make a nice, rich onion gravy. I've got some uh, red onions here that I have sliced up that will try, that I'll try to caramelize. I'm going to add a few extra things to those. I'm going to add a little bit of balsamic vinegar. I just sauteing. I've got some Guinness that I'm going to throw in there. A little Worcestershire sauce. And uh, I've got some beef stock going. And uh, so once I get the sauce made, get the sausages done, I've got some mashed potatoes I've already made. And what I'm going to do is put a little link at the very end that you can click on because I've made Colcannon before. I think it was like a year ago. And you can just click on that to see how I make my potatoes. So that's it. I'm going to get things cleared over here. And then we'll get on to our bangers and then on to our gravy or our sauce. So we'll be right back. All right, so over here at my Ninja Foodie Station, I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. So I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to set this over to barbecue griddle. I'm going to set my temperature for 375. And I'm going to set my time for 17 minutes. 17 minutes. Go ahead and start it. That is going to go into preheat mode. While the food is heating up, I'm going to go ahead and start my sauce. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two pats of butter, basically two tablespoons of butter, drop them in my pan, let them melt down a little bit. I'm going to add about one, two tablespoons of avocado oil. We'll get this melting down. In fact, I can go ahead and add my onions now. And I'm going to break them up as I put them in the pan. A lot of onions, but these will cook down. And we're not going to cook them fast. I'm going to kind of slow cook these, slow saute these, because I really want to get a nice caramelization on that. So we'll kind of let that go for a few moments, and our uh, foodie should be heated up here shortly. All right, so I'm giving these a little bit of a turn. And they're doing quite nicely at the moment. And right about this point here, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of cloves of garlic and another pat of butter. I'm also going to throw some aromatics in. I've got some marjoram, some thyme, and some sage that we're going to go ahead and saute along with the onions. So we'll let that go and uh, we'll get back to it. Whoop. Don't want to lose my onions. All ready. We'll let that go. Okay, that's for me to add some food. And I'm going to go just get a light spray of oil there. Probably don't need to, but I'm going to anyway. And get these going. And we'll let that cook. Now it's going to cook for about 17 minutes, about halfway through, it's going to ask me to turn the food over. So back to our onions here, 
and they are smelling fantastic. These aromatics are really smelling so good. And the reason why I'm using sage, rosemary, and uh, marjoram is because these are some of the, the uh, herbs that you would find in, uh, in traditional bangers. Now, a lot of you are probably asking, where does the term bangers come from? Well, I researched it, and going all the way back to World War I, when there was a scarcity of meat because of the war going on, um, what, uh, what the British, what the Irish, what the Scottish were doing uh, when they were making their sausages is that uh, they were using a lot of filler, whether it be oats or bread or what have you, um, and eggs in their sausages. So when they use more filler, the sausages tend to split or break open, bang open. And that's why they call them bangers. If you notice, if you ever had traditional Irish, Scottish, or British sausages, they have a different texture to them, uh, a more smoother texture. It's because of all the filler. It's really good, don't get me wrong. I love a British, Scottish, or Irish banger or sausage. I, I love them, I really do. Um, so there you go, my little history lesson on the mangers. This is looking good. I'm not cooking this too fast. I don't want to burn these. We're just going to let them caramelize down. So we'll let these go a bit more. All right, so we're getting a little brown here. And what I want to do right about now is to add a little bit of balsamic vinegar, probably about a, about a tablespoon. That adds a little sweet and sour to this, and it also aids in the browning. We want this to be a nice, rich sauce slash of gravy. And that addition of the balsamic vinegar is really going to give it a nice little pick-me-up. And look at that. That is looking good. All right, so we'll let this go for probably about another five minutes or so. Again, we're still cooking nice and slow. Okay, so we're looking really good here. We're caramelizing up really nicely. So what I'm going to do now is add a little Guinness. I'm going to go in with about a half a cup of Guinness. We'll let that cook down a little bit. And then we'll uh, come on back to this. All right, it's acting up to flip now. And these are looking fantastic. We give these a little flip, it's smelling fantastic. These are going to be so good. Alright, eight minutes. Come back to that. Might even be a little bit less. I'm thinking maybe, maybe seven. We're about two minutes into this step where we put our Guinness in. So I'm going to go ahead now and remove my aromatics. If I leave a little piece behind, that's okay. No biggie. Take some of these big chunks of garlic out now. And we're looking really, really good here. Now I'm gonna go in with my stock. I've got a nice little stir there. A little bit more. Bring that up to a simmer. I'm also going to go ahead and give it a dash of Worcestershire sauce. Stir that in. We'll let that reduce down a bit. So this has about five minutes remaining and I just re remembered that this is my Ninja Foodi. I got some convection uh, heating going on here, so I'm probably going to go ahead and pull these now. They're looking great. Let's go ahead and temp them. We're looking for at least 160, and we are at that. So these are going to come off. You can see how easy it was to cook these on my Ninja Foodi. Sausages are done. My sauce is just about there. What I need to do now is thicken it up a bit. I'm gonna do a cold roux method. What I'm gonna do is I've got some pats of butter here and I'm just gonna go ahead 
and dip these into some flour. And then I'm gonna toss them in my sauce here and these will thicken up so quickly, so easily, you gotta see this. One, two, And look at that, thickened up very nicely. Nice, deep, rich gravy. Okay, gravy's done. Sausage bangers are done. I have my mash right here. Now, to my mash, I want to add that I added one tablespoon of whole grain mustard. You gotta try it. Just trust me, it works night and day. So, I'm gonna go in with my mash. Kinda make a nice little mound. Get one of my bangers. Two of my bangers. Get that on there. Now, go in with this nice onion sauce slash gravy. Pour that right over there like that. And there you have it. Bangers and mash. Okay, I also took the liberty of uh, making some peas because Normally, you either serve some cabbage with this or some peas, and I like peas, so I made a few peas to go with my bangers and mash. Not mushy peas, I'm sorry. Tried them, they're okay. Not my favorite thing in the world. I hope I didn't offend any Irishmen out there. There you have it, bangers, mash, peas. Before I go in and do my tasting, let me do my shout out. And this episode, child, is to all the service men and women out there around the world that are standing at the ready right now in these uh, uncertain times. So I, I wish you Godspeed and uh, I hope that everything kind of just simmers down and uh, we can get on with uh, a nice peaceful life. Alrighty, well, let's go in and uh, try out this uh, bangers and mash. And uh, it's smelling so good. I know I always say it, but it really does. Get a little banger there, a little mash, a little onion, a little gravy, all in one. There we go. Absolutely fantastic. This. This is Ireland right here. This is bangers and mash. Those sausages are really good. So if you can't get traditional bangers, and you don't have a traditional Irish store nearby, and you see these on the shelf, get them. If you, well, get them if you're gonna be making bangers and mash. Or just get them, they're really good. So hey, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and most importantly, share. Right over here, go ahead and punch my logo, and that'll make it easier for you to subscribe. So until next time, thanks, and we'll see you.